stunning paintings, sweeping murals, inspiring works in stone, all breathtaking beauty created during one of America's darkest times, the era we've come to call the Great Depression. By the time Franklin Roosevelt was elected in 1932, the U.S. economy was in freefall. Unemployment approached 25 percent, and Oregon had been hit particularly hard. During World War I, there was a real demand for wheat and for timber, and so those um, you know, 19 teens were real boom years for farmers and in the timber industry. But then during the 1920s, demand fell. That was coupled by a period of drier weather conditions, especially at the end of the 1920s, which really hit farmers and ranchers hard. In the timber industry as well, um, there was a real slowing in the construction industry leading up to the Great Depression, and so all of those factors contributed to the fact that farmers, ranchers, and the timber industry were all feeling those inklings of the Great Depression before it hit the rest of the nation. Roosevelt had promised bold action in an effort to remedy the Great Depression, the so-called New Deal. And key among those bold actions was the creation of the Works Progress Administration. The WPA was the most significant of the New Deal programs, and that was in large part because of its scope um, and because of its significance. The range of building projects undertaken by the WPA was breathtaking. Thousands of miles of roadways, hundreds of bridges and public buildings. There are names familiar to all of us that came from New Deal programs like the WPA. Hoover Dam, LaGuardia Airport, New York's Lincoln Tunnel. The list goes on. Here in Oregon, the most famous WPA project, of course, is the iconic Timberline Lodge, where artisans not only built the lodge itself, but created its massive beams, its lighting, its richly ornate ironwork, and even its furniture. The number of proud, talented, but desperate unemployed Americans put to work by the WPA was staggering. It put about 8.5 million Americans to work over its eight-year duration. And for those um, Americans who worked in the WPA, they received about $41 a month in wages. And one thing that was really important to FDR and New Deal administrators is that that wage be less than they would make in the private industry, but significantly more than they would receive um, on the relief rolls. Roosevelt knew that America's artists needed to work as well. So, as part of the WPA, he launched the Federal Art Project to both help impoverish artists and fund art projects to rally a struggling nation by making art more accessible to the public. President Roosevelt believed that Americans needed to do more than just work to overcome the Depression, that they needed art and culture to lift the spirits of American people. Artists by the thousands asked to join the project, but had to meet strict requirements for employment. For artists to be employed by the WPA, they had to apply to be on the relief rolls. And in order to do so, they also had to prove that they were unemployed and were poor. And then they also had to submit artwork in order to be considered for art projects. And those who took part in the project represented American creativity in every imaginable way. Visual artists were employed who did the paintings and the murals and sculptures. Musicians were employed, playwrights for the Federal Theater Project, writers for the Federal Writers Project. So really all of the arts were targeted by these programs. American artists of every kind, whose careers might have faltered or failed completely as the Depression dragged on, were instead recognized as having a respected profession and given the ability to continue creating art, music, literature, theater, and more for their fellow Americans to enjoy at a time when our country was struggling to find something, anything, to lift its spirits.